When I was 15, I became a national chess champion. I was always looking for the next challenge, and I thought that that would be to train someone else to win the nationals. So I took on a few private students, and the following year, one of them won the national kindergarten championship. <laughs> I was 16. Some of you might be thinking I'm still 16, but I can assure you I'm not. He was five, and that was a life-changing experience for me. Because up until that point, I had been focused on my own individual pursuits. And watching Alec go through that journey of learning, along with his kindergarten classmates, showed me that I had an even deeper passion for helping kids to win. And when it, help, when it comes to helping kids to win in education today, I believe that there's a second language that every elementary school should be teaching. Some of you might be thinking I'm referring to German or Spanish or Mandarin. But actually, I'm referring to a programming language called Java. Some of you might be thinking coffee. <laughs> but Java is actually the most popular programming language in the world. It's a text-based language that's capable of supporting many of our most advanced applications. And it's known for being just a little bit hard. In fact, Java has such a bad rap that fewer than 10% of high schools nationally offer it, despite the fact that it's on the AP computer science exam and is the most popular programming language used in the industry. What you'll hear from many engineers is that Java is harder to learn than many other languages. But going through the process of learning Java creates a really solid foundation for understanding those other languages. I believe that we need to be teaching Java to students, and that if we're going to ensure equity and help students be prepared to lead the way in the future, that we need to start teaching them Java in elementary school. Having experienced the opportunity to partner with the Cajon Valley Union School District in creating America's first computer science immersion schools has given me a chance to see what's possible when it comes to advanced computer science in elementary school. I have a few examples from some of the things the students from high needs and high socioeconomic English language learner population school sites have been able to accomplish in less than one year that I'd like to show to you. This is Tony. Tony's a kindergartner who's been learning computer science along with her classmates. Oftentimes when I visit a school site, the teachers strategically direct me to specific students. I'm sure many of you have had that experience. When I made it into Tony's room, her teacher was occupied and gave me a chance to have kind of an authentic experience. Tony reached out with a small kindergarten voice and said, excuse me, sir, would you like to see my project? How can you say no? So I came over and said, of course. And she said, well, actually, I need to take a few seconds because I have to fix something. And within a span of around 10 to 15 seconds, she debugged her project and added what's called a conditional statement. And so she turned around the computer and said, OK, now you can look. If you click H on the keyboard, the character I just programmed will do a 360. She's in kindergarten. This is Shauna. She's a third grader who's been learning computer science along with her classmates. And one of the things that they've been learning in third grade is an unplugged activity uh, in addition to chess. And this systematic study of chess that they've been going through has been developing their visual spatial abilities to help prepare them for Java in fourth grade. One of the things they've been doing is learning how to play chess blindfolded. And I'd like to show you what that looks like. We're going to play right now, a little bit. OK. I'm going to go pawn e4. The pawn to a6. Pawn d4. The pawn to d6. Knight c3. Knight f6. <laughs> Knight f3. e6. e5. Capital K. We skip two. ahead around 10 moves. She's analyzing between 60 or 70 different choices, keeping all the pieces in her mind on the, on the grid. d8. And she made the best move. Afterwards, I asked Shauna, do you feel like you have a superpower? She said, actually, yes, I do. <laughs> this is Aaron. He's in fourth grade. And he's been learning Java along with his classmates. One of the things that they've been doing is learning how to create customized changes in Java that are reflected in their own customized Minecraft mod. Here's him articulating that deductive process. And. And the other thing is that when you in the block, you have to like code it in, in GIMP, and you have to draw it, and when you, then you have to declare, wrote register, 
Then when you when you put it when you then you play Minecraft and give it a test, and then that your block is fair. Cool. <laughs> I love the videographer, right? So you heard mention of Minecraft. The important distinction here is that the students are not playing Minecraft. They're making Minecraft. And what I mean is they're actually going through the same process that Marcus Person, the creator of Minecraft, went through when he was hot code swapping and making edits to the game in Java. And he's in fourth grade. One of his classmates from school says it best. This is Java, and we're only like in fourth and fifth grade, and we're already learning all of this. So like, this is like, like, well, someday we're gonna change the world with all of this like knowledge that we're getting because like we're only like I said we're only in fourth and fifth grade, it's like we're already getting all of this. So probably we're gonna be better than the high schoolers if we get there. <laughs> <laughs> Love that confidence. <clears throat> you might be thinking, okay, Andrew, did you just handpick the best kids? Is that what we're seeing? The most advanced students? And while it's true that these kids are incredible. What I'm excited to share with you is that they are truly a reflection of what you would see if you walked the buildings. You see hundreds of kids with these skills at their respective grade level. And when we think about what happens in many of our communities in respect to sports, we see parents developing skills in students as early as preschool. In some cases, out of a desire to help students be prepared for a potential exit from poverty, right? This might be their lottery ticket to be able to get out. When we contrast the opportunities and the odds in, in sports with the opportunities in computer science, let's say a student wants to make it into the NBA. There's around 400 jobs for that in the United States. If we compare that with the data from the Bureau of Labor Statistics, there's over one million unfilled computer science jobs projected to be available by 2020. 400 versus one million. I know that asking you to believe that fourth graders can learn Java is a tall order. And I have to admit and confess to you that I had a really hard time believing that they could do it at first as well. And I'm a, a bit ashamed to admit that because I should have known better, having seen what they could do in chess and in other disciplines. But after having seen and gone through that process with them, I know that they can do it now. And I want every child to have that opportunity. What I'm really trying to say is this. Exposure to computer science is important, but I believe that exposure alone is not enough. I believe that if we're going to ensure equity and truly prepare students to lead our nation into the future, that we need to be teaching students real programming languages, including Java, as early as elementary school. And what I've seen is that if we make awesome normal, students will rise to our expectations. They will rise, they will win, and they'll lead our country into a successful future. And so I offer you my hand, and I ask you to join me in helping them to do that. Thank you very much.